Hey Math 1, I'm back with a new video. We talked about how to graph linear equations in the previous one. It was pretty much just a rehashing of what we talked about uh, first semester, chapter 5, just to tune up. This lesson's going to be a tune up of how to write linear equations if you're given two points that are on that line. So, so for starters, we should keep in mind that y equals mx plus b is sort of like our formula. We ultimately want our linear equation to look like that unless it's some kind of weird special case. There's three steps to this process, if you recall. The first one is to find the slope, which is designated by the number multiplied by x, or m. There's a formula for that. It's basically how do the y's change, which is sort of like the rise. How do the x's change, which is sort of like the runs, x-axis y-axis. So I can name these points x1 for the 7, y1 for the 9, x1, y1. x2 is the 13, y2 is the negative 9. So I put the x's on the bottom and the y's on top just to remind me that that's how the formula works. That's step one. In fact, why don't I just do it step by step with this first one. So first step m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We just got to plug in and evaluate. So the y2 is negative 9. Make sure you keep the negative on there. Operation is minus a positive 9. So negative 9 minus 9. x2 is 13. Operation always minus. And then it's minus a positive 7, so it stays minus. So you get negative 18, same sign, add over 13 minus 7, which is 6. This one turned out to be a nice, neat whole number. m is equal to negative 3. Step 1 done. So now we know y equals negative 3x plus b. Now we got to find b. In order to find b, what you do is you say, I've got my m, which is negative 3, now I'm going to choose one of these x1, y1, or x2, y2s to actually plug in to the formula to find b. Here's what I mean. So you're choosing, um, you know what, I think I'm going to pick the 7 and the 9 because they're both positive. So I'm choosing the first coordinate, x equals 7 and y equals 9, to now plug into this equation because if I plug in for y, and I plug in for m, because I know it's negative 3, and I plug in for x, now I've only got one variable left in the equation, and it should be pretty easy to solve. So your job is to pick whichever one seems most convenient to you for the x, y. So here's step 2. I'm choosing x equals 7, y equals 9, and I know m is equal to negative 3. And I'm plugging these three parts into y equals mx plus b. So 9 for y. Negative 3 for m, 7 is x plus b, so 9 equals negative 21 plus b. And you just got to know how to solve this equation. Add 21 to both sides. Again, we're trying to neutralize the number that's being added to b. 30 equals b. So we've got our m, we've got our b. Step 3, easiest step of them all. You just make sure you're plugging in now for the m, we know it's negative 3, and you're plugging in for the b, we know it's positive 30. That's step 3. Step 3 is actually writing the final answer for the equation. Sometimes I get really wonky answers from people where they don't have a y or an x, they just got nothing but numbers uh, thrown together. Make sure you have a y as a placeholder for any y value, and you have an x as a placeholder for any x value. And there you go. That's how you write an equation of a line. What happens if we get, well, you know what? Number two is nothing special. Why don't you pause the video and try that one on your own? All right, let's see if you got it correct. So I'm first going to name this x1, x2, y1, y2, okay, and I'm going to use step one, m is equal to seven, 
The operation for the formula is minus. Now it's minus a negative 3. This is a lot of times where students will make weird mistakes. Make sure it's minus negative 3. Divided by x2, operation, minus 18. So if you recall, a minus negative just turns into a plus. So 7 plus 3 is 10. 8 and minus 18 is negative 10. We can evaluate this. This is just negative 1. All right, m equals negative 1. Now I choose one of these pairs. It seems like 8, 7 would be the simpler of the two. This one's got a negative number and a big two-digit number there. So I'm going to choose x equals 8 and y equals 7. Now keep in mind, you can't, you can't choose y equals negative 3 and x equals 8. They have to go together. It's a package deal. So we're trying to make it look like y equals mx plus b. So 7 goes in for y, negative 1 goes in for m. Operation multiplication, 8. So 7 equals negative 8 plus b. I would add the 8 to both sides to get rid of the minus 8. It gives me 15. All right, m is equal to negative 1, b is equal to 15. Now I just got to do on the last step, Rewrite the equation with a y placeholder. y equals negative 1x plus 15. All right, hopefully you guys got that right. And, oh no, decimals. Whatever can we do? Well... I mean, you guys know how to operate with decimals, right? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. There's nothing different here except a willingness and an endurance to, like, do something that's a little bit less convenient. All right, so decimals are inconvenient. We need to get over that. So slope is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 5.2 is my y2, operation minus, y1 is 6, x2 is 1.5, x1 is 2. All right, so 5.2 minus 6. Think of the difference between 5.2 and 6. All right, smaller number minusing means it's going to be a negative. There's only 0.8 difference between 5.2 and 6. So 0.8. And when you think about the same thing on the bottom, you're taking away a bigger number, so it's going to be a negative, of course. But what's the difference between 1.5 and 2? 0.5. So I think sometimes we overcomplicate it by trying to remember rules, but sometimes it's just a matter of, you can count. You can go on a number line and kind of visualize uh, what the difference is between them. So a negative divided by a negative is just positive, and... If you want to get rid of the decimals in this fraction, which is, yes, you do want to get rid of them, you multiply the top by 10 and the bottom by 10, and you get 8 over 5. Okay, so m is equal to 8 fifths. Not a nice, neat number, but certainly neater than uh, point, negative 0.8 over negative 0.5. On step 2, hopefully it's obvious to you guys that, hey, I think I want to pick the one with the two whole numbers and not the two decimals. So I'm going to pick x equals 2, y equals 6 from this coordinate right here. And my m, of course, is now established as 8 fifths. I'm plugging into y equals mx plus b. The y is 6. The m is 8 fifths. The x is 2. Make sure it's still multiplication. And just right away, I'm going to put the 2 over 1 because I remember that multiplying a fraction times a whole number usually requires us to visualize it that way. x is 2 over 1 plus b. Now just make sure you remember the rules of, of multiplying fractions. You look for cross cancellation whenever you can. Uh, you can't really divide 2 and 5 and you can't do much with 8 divided by 1 either. So once you've cross canceled, multiply straight across. 16 over 5. Yeah. At this point I would say you got a couple different options. Um, the, the way I would do it is I would say 16 divided by 5 is the mixed number 5, 10, 15, three holes, with one left over. So it's 3 and 1 fifth. And then to get B by itself, 
It's a positive 3 and 1 fifth. To neutralize it, you would subtract it from both sides. And then I know this is kind of hard for some of you guys to visualize, but, but stick with me. 6 minus 3 would be 3. Okay? Now, you're also taking away 1 fifth. So it's 3 minus a fifth. 6 minus 3 is 3. And then there's still a fifth that you're taking away from that. So if you can visualize it, what happens when you take three whole numbers and take away a fifth of one of them? You're left with four fifths and two leftovers. So B is two and, two and four fifths. All right, final answer. Step three is y equals eight fifths x plus two and four fifths. By the way, these were what are considered terminating decimals. It doesn't have like, you didn't have to round or, uh, yeah, you just didn't have to round. So you could have technically written this as 1.6x plus 2.8, and it's equally accurate because there was no rounding involved. All right, last one, I think. Is this the last one? Yes, it is. Fraction frenzy. Okay, a lot of times people do not. They are so petrified of fractions that they don't even try. And that's really a shame. So that's why I keep throwing these at you. How can we ever make sense of these fractions? Well, step one, if we name the correct parts, I'm, I still got a big fraction. It's just there's now fractions inside the fraction. And sometimes that's hard to visualize. Two thirds, the operation's always subtraction. And it's minusing a negative. So make sure you, you don't forget one of the negatives. On the bottom, it's 1 8 minus 1. Now, good news is, in order to find fractions, you normal, uh, in order to subtract fractions, you should probably find a common denominator. The common denominator is, always, is already there. So, 2 thirds plus 5 thirds is 7 thirds. Awesome. And then whenever you're subtracting 1, it's kind of like a leftover type situation on the bottom. You take 1 eighth away from 1 and you get 7 eighths. 8 eighths is a whole. So 1 eighth minus 8 eighths is negative 7 eighths. Now, some of you guys might need to visualize it like this. You could say, find a common denominator. This one is the same as 1 over 1. The common denominator would be 8. So it's like saying 1 8 minus 8 over 8 is equal to negative 7 over 8. What I'm saying is feel, you know, try to get a feeling for how you can do this without actually doing this computational work. You can just visualize, I'm taking an eighth away from 8 eighths. There's 7 left over. All right. Now, so we talked about how to add or subtract fractions, what happens when you're trying to divide fractions? Well, I think it's better visualized horizontally. So if you, if you were to take this right here, 7 thirds divided by negative 7 over 8, I think more people can compute that correctly than can compute that correctly. Because now it sort of like triggers the whole, oh, I'm supposed to uh, flip the second and multiply, right? Keep that one change the sign and flip this one. And now we're multiplying fractions in which cross cancellation right here is showing up right off the bat. So those sevens completely neutralized to one over one. You've got eight now over negative three. So negative eight thirds would be your, your slope on that. Now that was a ton of work to find the slope, but it could be done. We just had to, we had to use operations that we learned all the way back in sixth grade seventh grade, eighth grade, and here we are. All right, now, I don't know about you guys, but um, I could pick the first one, and it seems like the obvious choice. Eh, yeah, let's, let's pick the first one. I guess I was seeing something with this, but I think either way, it's not going to be as bad as it might seem. 
So these are the three pieces of info now that we're plugging into y equals mx plus b. The y is negative 5 thirds. The m is 1. The b is negative 8 thirds. This is really easy calculation time. 1 times anything is itself. And now, again, I have to add the 8 thirds to both sides to get rid of it. Oh, and this is beautiful. A negative 5 plus 8 would be opposite sign subtract 3 over 3, which is 1. Awesome. So the B term right there is 1. M is negative 8 thirds. B is 1. Our final answer, I'll put it up in the top right-hand corner here because we're running out of space. Y equals negative 8 thirds for my M, X plus 1. All right, hopefully that was a good enough recap for you guys. I did not show examples of special cases for writing linear equations, horizontal and vertical lines. So you might want to take it, you might want to check out, I think it's video 5.4 that documents how horizontal and vertical lines, um, yeah, have a completely different thing going on here. But I'm going to stop it there. Hopefully it was helpful. Good luck on 6.2.